welcome again to my studio for the three or four people out there who may have been waiting for me to begin this online class. Uh, here we go. I, I apologize that I haven't gotten started on this sooner, but I had some other commitments I had to had to uh, finish up. Um, I wanted to give particular attention to the, to this, so uh, now I'm ready, and I hope we can proceed uh, in in good fashion. You know, uh, I really would like to to uh, pass along the things which I've learned over the years. Uh, I'm not an academian uh, painter, although I, I wish I had had, had the uh, opportunity to to go to academy and, and learn a lot of the things which I've learned over the years, but that wasn't the case. So I've had to learn things the hard way, and uh, of course, you know, I, a lot of a lot of studying and a lot of practice and a lot of failure, um, which I sort of regret because there's so much time lost. I probably lost 50 percent of the of the work that I that I have produced over the years, mainly because I messed them up somewhere along the line. Uh, fortunately, I was able to recognize that they were messed up, and so that was a good thing. Anyway, but I, uh, you know, I've been painting now for close to 40 years, and I have been able to acquire some knowledge along the way, and that knowledge is is relative to my particular. Uh, needs as a painter, you know, we, we learn that our artistic heart allow, you know, we learn that our, that our artistic heart follows a certain kind of a path and uh, you have certain tendencies and, uh, and I've, I've learned uh, what my tendencies are. From the beginning I've painted every kind of style, every, every kind of subject matter and uh, Probably in the last 15 or 20 years, I, I realized that my tendencies are to paint those things which I observe in nature. And my guiding phrase is that I like to interpret the tokens of the, the divine, the tokens of creation, those wonderful things, which is just about everything, uh, and, and try and, and interpret them, interpret, interpret those according to my own vision, you know. Uh, and the technical part of it, uh, mastering the technical part of it, allows any painter to be able to proceed on his own and start. Not a, you know, it's not enough just to to be good technically, but you have to be able to have acquired skill at the craft in order to do what what your heart wants you to do as a painter. Know, to, to paint what you want to paint. You, can, you know, it's not an accident. So, it's my hope that by doing a little painting for you, you may, you'll be able to see how I approach, uh, how I approach the painting process. And I've chosen a, a, a subject matter to be a self-portrait. The reason being is that I can always be sure that the model is going to be available. And uh, although the subject matter is not necessarily the best, it uh, you know it'll work. So let's start with uh, with the materials. Okay. First thing, uh, probably the most important thing, and the thing that has given me the most trouble over the years, is the surface that I paint on. You know, we've lived in places around the world where I really didn't have available to me just anything. Uh, not only was it not available, as I didn't necessarily know what was available or what you know what was good. Uh, it's taken me a lot of years to figure out what works for my particular style of painting. And by style of painting, I mean you know the the types of brushes that I use, the, the degree of detail I want to achieve, the degree of fluidity of, of uh, brush and paint, all of this stuff becomes really important. And um, 
Now I've settled on something that I really like. I now use uh, Old Holland Portrait Linen. This is a fine, fine grain portrait linen. Um, it's double primed with oil primer, not with, uh, not with acrylic primer. Which means, by the way, that if you use oil oil based primer that you can't be putting water based paints on top of it. You can't underpaint with acrylic or something like that. You got its oil all the way. And uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, but the particular linen that I get, it's really, really good, but it's not perfect for me. So in order to make it so it really feels good and the and the and the paint goes on the way I I I want it to go on. And it's really a matter of touch and you get used to it. You figure it out yourself what really feels good for you. I put one coat, one relatively thin coat of Winsor Newton oil painting primer. Now this is a great product which not very many people that I know of use, but it's a great product. It, uh, it sets up a surface that is really quite consistent. I mean, there's every variety of, of uh, gesso out there. And, I mean, oil painting gessos, which are a form that was going back for 500 years. All these things are great. But as far as a commercially purchased product, for me, this oil painting primer by Winsor Newton is really fits the bill. Anyway, so I, 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 I get the linen. Uh, I stretch my own linen, of course. And, uh, and then I give it one coat of, of this oil painting primer. And it's really, really important and, uh, that you have the surface that, that you like. It's, your tools are, are meant to assist you to do as good a possible job as you can. And if you're fighting your tools all the time, you're in, you're in trouble right from the beginning. So, surface that you're painting on is the number one thing. Okay? Next, and uh, not necessarily as important because you know, are the paints. You know, there's a there's any number of paints out there, but and there's a lot of really good high quality paints, but it's sort of what you get used to, and you know the the, the manufacturing of the paints is is relatively similar, I I assume because I've tried all kinds of paints and they all sort of feel the same. Uh, the difference is is that each uh, brand of paint creates its own colors. So, you know, you let's say you buy a, fl a mixed color, like a flesh tint, from one one company. Uh, it's different than uh, than than the flesh tint that you buy be, buy from another company. Not necessarily the the quality of the paint's probably not any different, but the color is there, and you need that consistency of color. So then your mind you have a stable working system. You know what colors you can mix with another. Once you start changing that, then you uh, you have to adapt, and that's not always fun. Okay, so I I basically have for as long as I can remember used Winsor Newton oil paints, professional oil paints, not the uh, not the student grade, but the professional grade. They're heavier. They have more body. They have more pigment. They're just uh, they're just upscale a little bit. And that's important, uh, but the most important thing is this consistency. You've got to know what you what what colors you're going to be pulling out of the tube. Now, if you've learned to mix your own colors and uh, prepare your own paints, that's a whole different story. I'm talking about store bought paints, and that's what I use. 